All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take, Sharp and Shapiro. A lot of subjects we touched upon in the first 30 minutes. Of course, your thoughts on the riots, not just in Vegas, but throughout the country. And I made it very clear there are some a lot of dumb people on both sides, and there's some smart people on both sides. We need to get those dumb people out of the equation. And uh, I wanted to give out the phone number because I know there's a lot of people waiting on hold that want to chime in, and this show is certainly about you. 702. 702- Two five seven five three nine six is the number to call. Now you never know who's going to call into our show. I remember we were doing an interview with Kim Goldman, uh, the sister to the late Ronald Goldman, uh, in the slangs that I believe uh, O.J. Simpson was responsible for. We don't need to get into that. But in the middle of that interview, we had O.J. Simpson's attorney call in, and that was that was interesting. You never know who's going to call into the show. And I know uh, my understanding is we have Gary Peck on the line. If you don't know who Gary Peck is, he is a thirteen-year executive director of the ACLU. Uh, in the state of Nevada. So, uh, Gary, thanks for calling in. Uh, what's on your mind, my friend? What do you want to tell you us? Doing, my brothers? I have to admit, don't get mad at me. I don't listen to talk radio that much anymore, but I accidentally landed on your your station where I've guest hosted before, way back, like in a former life, guys. And <laughs> you're, an inter- you're an interesting pair, and you, my brother, are a really interesting, iconoclastic thinker, I don't always agree with what you guys say, but I find it really interesting and worthwhile and actually adds to the public conversation. In well, Gary, ways. I appreciate I appreciate those yeah, thanks ki- a lot, Gary. kind words, Gary. Uh, since you were, uh, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, 13 years you were uh, director of the yeah. ACLU, correct? Yeah, so you're the person. Per- yeah. Right, and then I went on and did other gigs, and I'm still involved in some criminal Good. justice reform work, including police abuse and accountability. All right, so let's talk about that. Way, my, my family's name, my family's name, God bless him, Shapiro. I don't oh, know how about that? <laughs> That's anyway. very possible, Gary. Well, let me let me ask you this, since we have you on the line, and I appreciate your, you calling in and your kind words, Gary. And I don't speak for the ACLU. I want to be clear about Fair that. Enough. I, Fair enough. Fair enough. But That's can we all? Can we all what what was your first reaction when you saw that video of 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 this man losing his life? Uh, as you know, Gary, you, you were since you were there for 13 years, I covered the ice cream truck shooting. I covered the uh, the in Henderson. I covered uh, the Costco shooting. And, uh, you know, but I've also seen I've seen it with my own eyes, African-Americans, minorities that have been mistreated by police. What are your thoughts on that video? What do you think should happen to those four officers? Well, the first thing I thought of, oddly enough, was Tashi Brown, a young black dude who was strangled to death in a parking garage at a casino, was originally charged by the district attorney. Correct. My guess would be, though, I don't question people's motives. I can't vouch for this. But, you know, it just followed a tried and true formula. He withdrew the charges. He moved the case into a secret grand jury proceeding. He hired a pro-cop. I actually have a social science and law background. A pro-cop shop called Force Science Institute, which really doesn't do science at all, and has never, literally never, found that a cop was responsible for an officer-involved homicide. Like, literally, you can look it up. They then exonerated the cop. And right. Boy, was that during the coroner's inquest? Is. Gary, was that when they had the coroner's inquest? No, that that was post all of that. That's the most recent, really outlandish gotcha. Las Vegas case. It was an atrocity. It happens everywhere. I watched that. I heard, yep. I heard your co-host, and I'm embarrassed. I'm not sure which of you is which, but I'll look. This is Brian so talking. Tune in. Yep. Okay. So I, I, I would just say the idea that at first thing I thought of, I swear to God I'm not making this up, was I can hardly wait for the words excited delirium to be thrown around by the cops. This is a case of excited delirium. He was going crazy and nuts and probably had drugs in him. And that's really what caused his death, not the fact that someone put his knee on his throat for right. nine minutes, two and a half of which were yeah. after he had no pulse. J.D., do you want to comment on that? Because I think enough. Gary's talking about you because you brought up, you know, the fact that he yeah, might have had heart disease. Say, and, I just yeah. No, say, I just I, I brought up the, the results of the autopsy. Obviously, the cop had his had his knee on his neck for nine minutes. And obviously, the Minneapolis Police Department has a history 
of you know being racist of systemic racism. I mean, this is the same place where Philando Castile happened in 2016. The department kills African Americans at 13 times higher rate than Caucasians, which is pretty much the highest in the country. But I'm saying the reason that he's not being charged with first degree murder is because the, as of now, the pr- preliminary results on the autopsy are saying that he did not die of or that, that he. He may not have died of strangulation or, right. you know, traumatic asphyxia. Well, that's, 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 yeah. all, that's all I'm may, saying. Yeah, if I may, the cause of death matters, but you take the person as you find them. If he had a heart condition and someone put their knee on his throat and he died because he had a heart condition exactly. and was strangled and was vulnerable, we call it the eggshell play, the eggshell Agree. person. Yep. That's not determinate. Cause of death is determinate. Gary, I could not. I, Gary, I could not agree with you more. I know exactly what you're saying, my friend. Unfortunately, I got to get to some other callers, my friend. We have a lot of people on hold, but I want to say thank you for your kind words. I appreciate you calling in, and call in any time, okay, Gary? We appreciate you. you thank you. It, no, thanks brother. a lot, Gary. SB SB242. Look it up. The worst cool. cop bill passed in our I will. state legislator. Bless his pleasure unanimously i want to make it clear i'm not partisan unanimously passed it's a disgrace it's an embarrassment it was a ppa bill we'll Nobody look it up opposed it Nobody we will look it up my friend it. yeah we'll check it out thank you gary i appreciate you calling in uh 702-257-5396 is the number to call let's go to kevin kevin you're next on the vegas take kevin did we lose you Let's go to George. George, you're next on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, George? How are you doing? Good. Doing okay. So let me just give me a few seconds of what I think about it, and we can talk about it. So first of all, the first thing she did was wrestle those four officers right away. I right. think that might have solved some of the problems, you know. I agree. You know, and then like me, I, I'm 66 years old, and I, I have a lot of African-American strength, and I've seen this personally. We get pulled over, and they harass him, and then leave me alone. So I understand. Same with me. I've seen it know? myself. I We're on the same page. Yep. All right. Now, then the other thing is I don't understand different governors and mayors. And, can't they see what's going on as a, as, a, as a problem's happening? They should be putting police and stuff where all those stores that protect those, those people that have, have uh, uh, you know, businesses and let the protesters walk by, let them walk around all they want. That's fine. But when the other people are coming and destroying all the businesses, and then by the time they get there, it's all done. I mean, they have to see what's been happening three or four days in a row. I understand the government yeah. or the, the police, you know. Well, I think I think uh, J.D. said it uh, right, and, and we agree. Uh, I think Governor Sisolak, yes, there were a few businesses that were affected, but I think I Governor know, he Sisolak. He did a great job. No, he, yeah, he, he did, did, he did job. an exceptional he job. On the news all week. No, you're right. Listen, yeah. Minneapolis failed. There's no question right, about that. Minneapolis, literally, they, they abandoned their precinct on Friday I night. Know. They they had no they had no police presence whatsoever. They let their city get completely destroyed on Friday, right, and night. I criticize that. If you're a small business owner yeah. in in democratically led Minneapolis, how do you vote blue after that takes okay. place? Well, I, I'm not going to because make who, is it. To, who is to say that this won't take place again? Okay. So this has also happened, and businesses have been burned down in Republican states as well. Actually, no, Brian, almost almost I'm every single anyway. almost every single city. Where, where this has been the worst, has had a Democratic mayor and Democratic leadership. Okay. Well, I'm not going to go one there. That hasn't, I know you want to. One that hasn't is there. Omaha, Nebraska. Because, okay. Well, the fact that somebody is a Republican or a Democrat should have absolutely no bearing on this conversation. I know you want to make it that, but it should have no bearing on the conversation. What I want to talk about is race relations in this country. How do we fix the problem? How do we stop the rioters? Not to blame someone because they have a D or an R next to their name. I'm just simply not going to do that. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to Bob. Bob, you're next on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Bob? Hi. Hi. Uh, go ahead, Bob. I think that, I think that uh, our leaders ought to take a cue from the great uh, Johnny Cochran, who said, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. What? But in this case, I think they should take the position, if you loot, the cops must shoot. So you agree with – first of all, let me just start from what you said. There's nothing great about Johnny Cochran. He got a double murderer off. If you want to call him a great person or a great mind for doing that, for coming up with a slick little term, I think your definition of great is very different than mine. I understand Johnny Cochran is dead, but so were two people that were decapitated by O.J. Simpson. So I'm not going to call Johnny Cochran great. That's number one. Number two, the president of the United States said a statement – 
that was made in the 1960s by a racist police chief who was going after minorities in an aggressive manner. There's nothing great about the leader of the free world saying, if you loot, we're going to shoot. Okay, I know I'm paraphrasing what he said. There's nothing great about that, sir, with all due respect. That is inciting violence. And if you think somebody goes into a business and they steal a TV that they should be shot, then there's something wrong with you, quite frankly. You sound like that guy who had that bow and arrow. Well, that's just your opinion. Yeah, yeah, it is. And I think it would be many others as well, sir. Can I make it? Can I say something else before you hang up on me? Uh, I hope it's a little bit more intelligent than what you're calling Johnny Cochran great, sir. Yeah, I hope you can. I hope. That's, that's a very low bar you have. Yeah, it's a very low bar you have. So go ahead. I'm calling a kettle black for sure. Oh, really? Well, what have I said that is ignorant? Go ahead. I'm waiting. Go ahead. You think Johnny Cochran is great? You think it's great for a defense attorney to get somebody off on double murder? Boy, you have a great standard of great. God forbid. No, you wait a second. No, no, you wait a second. You wait a second. No, you wait a second now. How would you like it if somebody decapitated two members of your family, the guy got off, and then his, and he called his attorney great, you dummy? Yeah, Get off my show. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, goodbye. 702 Great. Yeah, good call, Bob. Yeah, that's great. Great. <laughs> 702 Do you think, okay, can you please back me up on this? Is there anything great about Johnny Cochran? Uh, no. Thank you. Okay. 702 Not going to argue with you about Johnny Cochran. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, or Bailey. As much as I'd like to. Yeah, yeah. John Travolta was great in the ESPN special. Who played Johnny Cochran, by the way, on the ESPN special? What about Barry Sheck? <laughs> Barry Sheck, the DNA guy. <laughs> that guy was shorter than you. That guy's like four feet tall. 702 257. Stein's actually 6'1. 257 5396 is the number to call. Let's go to Clyde. Clyde, you're next on the Vegas take. Okay, very yeah. good show, Brian. Uh, hey, what's I'm up, Clyde? Over the last month or so, there's a few uh, quick points. Uh, early this morning, uh, First of all, this is not a new scenario, so it's not like it's something new. Number two, there were two police officers that I heard this morning, but, but coincidentally, both were women. Now, the first one, she said, and actually, the cop was wrong. And then she said, matter-of-factly, it wasn't racist. Now, Brian, the only way she could make that statement is she could read his mind. Right. She said that automatically, and the, the person didn't challenge her. And, Clyde, can I ask something else, Clyde? I want to get your thoughts on something else. You're an African-American man? Yes. Okay, I want to ask you this. This is something that the media has not covered. I don't know if you've seen this, sir. Did you see what happened in Atlanta yesterday no, where you have an African-American man and an African-American woman in a car? It is past curfew, and these two are not posing any violent threat to the officers, and two of the officers – broke their windshields, and tased the gentleman, dragged him out of the car. Those two officers were immediately fired. My question is, why are they not uh, criminally charging those officers? This is the type of stuff that needs to stop. I agree with you, but again, Brian, it's the culture. But let me make this other point with this other woman cop said. Remember, she condemned it. Then she says, we can't expect us to police our own police officers as though you're supposed to take a notebook and they know whether they're racist or not. Now, another major point here that people are into a contradiction. They can say people coexistence. Or and you know what? What yeah. you're talking about, Clyde, what you're talking about when it comes to contradiction, uh, uh, you know what? Let me explain real quickly how, that, how I, could, I, I think the laws can change to help that. We need body cameras on 24-7. I've been saying this for a decade. 24-7 mandatory, audio and video. Now, you might be saying, well, Brian, how's that going to help? Well, besides having all the evidence you need and nobody can lie anymore, what it will do is also save our taxpayer dollars because if you have somebody that files a complaint against police that is not factually accurate, all we got to do is go to the, the body camera footage and, and, and see it, audio and video. You know what? Right now, in most cities across the country, it is only voluntary how many people at their job would voluntarily want a body camera on them 24-7? I would argue not many. It shouldn't be the police officer's decision. It should be laws that are put in place. They're allowed to put cameras everywhere, at traffic lights, everywhere. I, I, but I, when it's not convenient for them, that is when they don't want to put the camera on. I, I think in light of kind of what's happened here, you could make the argument that it should be a little more difficult to be able to join a police force. There should be more vetting. There should be more mental vetting. Uh, there should be, uh, obviously, no different training protocols. But the, the pay should also be increased. 
I think that that after a situation like like this, I mean, because Derek Derek Chauvin was one police officer in Minneapolis who you know who, who murdered whether it's first or third degree, he murdered George Floyd and look at this massive backlash. I mean that because these police officers, they're supposed to, they're, you're supposed to, you know, trust them. You call them. When, Protect when, and serve. Well, yeah. Well, you, you call them when, when something terrible is happening to you, you're supposed I to, take it a step you're further? supposed to have that, have that thought in the back of your mind that this person is on my side. I don't disagree with you. And I'll even and, take and it a I step further. And I think that, that police officers need to, it needs to be a more esteemed position, but, but with that, you know, comes a pay increase. I, I, I don't disagree with you and I'll take it a step further. I had a conversation with a friend of mine over the weekend about exactly what you're talking about. I think every police officer should not only have a high school diploma, that's not enough because they have too much power. You have to have a college degree. I want educated, intelligent people to be police officers. Now, with that would come scholarships. If you want to be a cop out of high school, I think there should be programs put in place to give you scholarships. I think you should have to take an IQ test. I really do. And, you know, I know they do all the background checks, and obviously you can't be a felon and be a police officer. I get that. But I do think we need to hold officers to a higher standard uh, as far as intellect, uh, and as far as education, well, and this guy wasn't exactly you know top of the line. He worked at strip clubs. He worked at I know. restaurants. I mean, I know. he was. Well, he he's, was, a, he's he, an idiot. He was probably the the, yeah. the, the, the lower tier, is, you know, as far as police officers go. Should have never been a cop. based on the places yeah. that, that he was asked to, you know, yeah, protect. He should have never been a cop. We all agree on that. Seven zero two two five seven five three nine six. Let's go to Sarah. Sarah, you're next up on the Vegas Take. Hey, what's up, Sarah? Hi, um, I live here in Las Vegas for, let's see, 19 years, and I just wanted to say um, the eggs, because I've got five rods in my neck and 19 in my back, so if somebody threw me on the ground like him, and I mean, I would be at least paralyzed, possibly dead, um, and yep. not only that, I've been, I'm 10% uh, black and 90% uh, Jewish, so... I have had several run-ins with police just as a normal person, um, but I had a, uh, my husband is some, my ex-husband is somebody here in town that knew several cops and um, uh, judges here in town. So he attacked me after we were divorced, and um, I was harassed on social media by white cops saying, oh, these are false police reports, right? all this kind of stuff. And, you know, to where when I was going around town, I was getting pulled over for just no reason, basically. Like, so you think it's your ex-husband and his connections to law enforcement, the reason why you were harassed by police? On Definitely on Facebook, because they were putting it right on my Well, let me, just, let me just say and that then, is absolutely horrible. I'm so sorry you've had to go through that. I just want to touch upon what you said to start the call. And you're yeah. right. Uh, everyone has different health conditions. For example... Uh, there are people with heart conditions out there, and if they're tased, they could die. And by the way, that has happened before. Now, listen, I yeah. would rather have a police officer tase somebody than shoot somebody, if, if possible. But I totally understand your point. We cannot focus on George Floyd's health conditions. We need no. to focus on what the officers did uh, that put him in that position. Correct. Yeah, because when I heard that, I just thought, we can't be focusing on that at all because if you saw me walking around, it's not like I'm on, you know, it's been five years since the surgery. So it's not like I'm in a, in a walker or anything like that. You wouldn't know unless you saw the, you know, all the scars on my neck and, and back. Sure. And real well, quickly, you wouldn't yeah. see it. Yeah. You know well, let me just. Uh, apps, I know exactly what you're saying, Sarah. Let me just say this. Uh, I'm sorry that you've had to go through that. And uh, I think that's a perfect example of. You know, yes, we're talking about minorities. Yes, we're talking about police brutality and how they treat minorities. But it's not just minorities. Uh, it's also other people out there like Sarah. Police can also mistreat others. Just because you're not black doesn't mean you can't be mistreated I'll by tell police. You, one time in about 2014, I was taken down by three police officers. I was in a chokehold. I had to yell at, at somebody that I was with to, to get this thing on camera. And I think had they not gotten that on camera, the, the, the chokehold wouldn't have stopped. I've, and, and I've told I mean, I've, I have, I'm telling you that there is there are there there is some truth to the fact that there are some police officers who just weren't great athletes in high school, who you know have a, a little insecurity or have they, they have a chip on their shoulder that that they that they'd like to, um, I guess you could say express on on some people that that they're you know i guess dominated under circumstances wait a second if that's there the case are, why is, some, if that's the case some, why is some, not a police officer there are some police officers <laughs> that do become police officers so that they can 
just do things like that. Uh, I, I'm going to tell this story real quickly because I know we got to get back to the phone lines. 30 seconds. I was on a date. I was following my uh, uh, my date to a sushi restaurant. I was pulled over on Tropicana. The cop said, give me your ID. I said, officer, I don't have to show you my ID until you tell me what I did wrong. Can you please tell me what I did wrong? He says, get out of the car. He grabs my shoulder. He pushes me out of the car forcefully. He puts my hands behind my back. He puts handcuffs on me. Uh, he tells my date to go home. I don't know what else he said to her, but she left. I don't blame her. And then he, after five minutes. Probably didn't take much convincing. Maybe not. That's another argument. But he looks at me and he says, we have reason to believe that your car has been stolen. First of all, who would steal an 04 Hyundai Elantra? That would be my first question. And my second question was, officer, just look at my damn ID. It's my car. It's registered in my name. After being handcuffed for 10 minutes, and I didn't resist. If I resisted, who knows what would have happened. Maybe if I was black, maybe he would have done something else. Maybe he would have tased me. I don't know. All I know is the officer was a son of a bitch. And uh, that guy should not be a police officer. If I ever saw him again out of uniform, I would tell him that. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to Wayne. Wayne, you're next up on the Vegas Take. Hey, what's up, Wayne? Hey, good morning, you guys. This is interesting. I'm liking this morning. It's good conversation. <clears throat> I about, oh, a couple weeks ago, I got on the radio with you two and you said that if I, I'm convincing enough that if I was telling the truth, you kind of want to hear it again a little bit. This will really calm your heart, Brian. I'm serious. Your voice definitely calms my heart. I'll be honest. Okay. I'm the one that was assigned to USS Mercy and found the coronavirus here in the United States, part of a military crackdown. Okay. Now I'm not calm. Now I'm not calm because you're talking but, about coronavirus okay, and we're not but, talking about coronavirus and we got to get to the other calls. I apologize, Wayne. Uh, you calmed me there for about six seconds. And then when you said coronavirus, that's where you lost me. 702-257-5396. Alex, you're next. I think you have a Alex, what's going voice, on? Wayne. Hey, Alex. Uh, 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 yeah, I was, real, I was getting real calm there. By the way, Brian, an 04 <laughs> Hyundai, it must have been the lemonade stand. wasn't making much money. It, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the while he was a junior in high school. Yeah, I, I had that car for a while. But uh, I, I, now, I now have a Dodge Charger, uh, a new Dodge Charger, so I'm doing much uh, better. It's a bigger lemonade stand. Listen, um, um, I definitely agree with you, Brian, on the, on the, the cop issue. Um, there's definitely some bad people out there. I know that for a fact. Absolutely, there's no doubt. I really appreciate that. I, I appreciate myself that I actually agree with you on something, which is getting the cops to have to go through some education. And I'm not talking about none of this uh, cultural education, meaning what culture, learn about the background of the civilians. No, I'm talking about what you're saying. Get an education so that you're an intelligent individual that understands what the civil rights are of people. As far as those yeah. two... Uh, individuals in the Atlanta uh, over there, I, th I think you were telling me there were two individuals in a car and they got yes. their yes. vehicles. Those, yep. people, those are the ones we're talking about. That's what a lot of people are protesting. Exactly. However, here here we go. And, Brian, after I, I, uh, you, you probably made you happy, I agreed with you. Here goes the part that you're probably going to get mad. Saturday night when those two or 3,000 people were protesting downtown, remember I told you that my dad's business was downtown. We went down there myself. I'm Colombian, and I've got three nephews who are in the military in Colombia that happened to be here on, here on vacation, and they were more than happy to go down there with AK-47s and protect the business. Well, guess what? Around almost midnight, about 100 looters came down. And remind you, they're burning cities and bu I'm burning build businesses all over the country. And there we are. There's a gentleman on the street about 100 yards away yelling at the looters, don't come and destroy our business. If we weren't there, who knows what would have happened because they literally threw him on the ground. And I never said, I, and I appreciate, I appreciate your story, and I never said, for the record, I never said that you're not allowed to be there to try to defend your business. What I did say is that if you don't feel like your life is in danger, you're not allowed to shoot them. There is a fine line, and there is a difference between being there in front of the store and defending your I mean, business Brian, and telling people not to come in. A hundred against and five shooting, uh, uh, again, is, is alone to feel that your again, life is in danger. Uh, it doesn't, if doesn't, you're, if you're that outnumbered, you're going to believe that okay. your life if is in danger. And you heard what he said. Okay. The, the guy that yelled at them to not hurt their businesses got the crap kicked out of him. I watched this happen several times over the weekend, Brian. Any, th there was a situation where, okay, yeah, say I'm in my business. You come in. You try to destroy it. You steal my things. I say stop. I say go away. And you attack me. I'm shooting you. That's how it works. That's how it should work across the entire country, Brian. 
Okay, so if there's 100 people going uh, into your business, you can't just spray them with an AK-47. That's not what the law says, but we'll get back to that a little bit later. But that's specifically what the law says. Speaking of the and, law. And again, Brian, there's, there's, a, there's a major difference here. 